What if we pluck Gojo out of time and face him against Heian Era Sukuna? Who wins? Hold your horses there. If you're not caught up on the manga, you need to keep scrolling. Because to talk about this, we're going to have to talk about some things that are currently going on. And shout out to Ryan for the sponsored video. Ryan wanted to know what I thought about Gojo saying he would lose to Sukuna even without the Ten Shadows. And this is essentially the same thing as saying Gojo versus Heian Era Sukuna who would win. Before we get into this, let me just say that these hypotheticals can be a lot of fun, right? It can be a lot of fun to dive into the details and debate in good faith different aspects of it and just try to dissect what would happen. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that it is a hypothetical. No one knows the answer to this question, except maybe Gege, right? So anyone that tells you, oh, Sukuna for sure wins, or Gojo for sure wins, and you're an idiot if you think otherwise, they're being completely disingenuous. Because in all of fiction, in all of media, these fights or these contests don't happen in a vacuum. Just because person A is better than person B at something doesn't mean person A always wins because there's context, there's nuance. So just remember that before you rage in anyone in the comments. We're all having a good time here. So who wins this fight? Well, honestly, either of them. Now, before you say that's a huge cop out, let me just say that this is a massively high diff fight no matter how you slice it. However, what I will say is that most people that I've seen that have shared their take on this think Sukuna just slams Gojo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this from a Gojo side of things to show you guys that Gojo has just as good a chance as Sukuna does. First, let's address the things Gojo says in the airport. The first of which, the inspiration for this question, Gojo thinking that even without the Ten Shadows, he might lose to Sukuna. The important thing to note here is that he doesn't say, even without the Ten Shadows, I would have lost. He says, even without the Ten Shadows, it still would have been a really tough fight and I don't know if I would have won, which is completely fair for him to say, given the circumstances of everything going on here. He did feel as if Sukuna was holding back at times. So Sukuna holding back at times means there's unknowns for Gojo, meaning he thinks, well, even if the Ten Shadow thing didn't exist, I still might have lost because there's things about Sukuna I still don't know right? Hopefully that makes sense. And one of the biggest question marks about Sukuna that we don't know is his curse techniques. So there are things that Sukuna could potentially have in his bag that would have affected this fight in a potential Ten Shadows-less universe, right? However, what you need to remember is that Sukuna went out of his way to make sure to get Megami, you know, to do the Maharaga thing, his whole battle plan revolved around the adaptation of Infinity. So it's disingenuous to say that even without that, he still would have slammed because I think it's fairly obvious that he needed the adaptation from Maharaga to win this fight. If he had another win condition, and we're going to talk more about domain amplification and domain battles in a second, so just set that aside for now, but if he had another win condition to get through Infinity, he wouldn't have gone through all the trouble with Maharaga. The reason he was holding back in a lot of those domain expansions that Gojo didn't understand at the time was because he was adapting to Infinite Void with Maharaga and that's why he wasn't using another curse technique. This is one of the things that Gojo was confused about during the fight which is definitely informing his statement of he wasn't giving it all he had. So if we extract Tin Shadows from that entirely, that situation never happens, right? The Sukuna wouldn't be holding back. So all, all that to say, in a way, Sukuna was holding back, but not just to like make himself weaker for fun. It was part of his legitimate game plan in order to adapt to Infinity, which ultimately got him the win. I am yapping right now, but bear with me. The important takeaways are Sukuna was holding back, but it was part of his game plan in order to utilize Ten Shadows and Maharaga. The other important thing to note that is without those, he doesn't have a win con for Infinity. Because if he did, why would he go through the trouble of that anyway? Whatever Sukuna's mysterious curse technique is, is not something that can just bypass Infinity on its own. The next thing we need to talk about is if we do pluck Gojo out of time and face him against this version of Sukuna, neither one of them get prep time, as it were. And Sukuna's biggest advantage against Gojo in the manga was the prep time. And what do I mean by prep time? I just mean that, for one, all of the Tin Shadows stuff that he set up, you know, deliberately for this fight to adapt to get his win con. But not only that, all of the info he had on Gojo before ever fighting him. Now, Gojo obviously has some info on Sukuna too, but in this hypothetical, we're going to assume that Gojo doesn't know anything about the past version of Sukuna that he's going to fight. So neither knows about either's curse technique, right? So most importantly from this is that Sukuna wouldn't know about Gojo's domain expansion. 
He wouldn't know that it was essentially an instant win con if he ever got hit by it, even for a second, nor would he know that if he touched Gojo, he could be immune from it. Now, in Gojo's case, that would mean that he does not have the Prison Realm experience that he utilized to help him in the Domain Clash, but we'll talk more about that in a second. The next thing I want to talk about is people that say Sukuna could have ended Gojo much earlier in their fight if he wasn't trying to upgrade his arsenal by learning from Maharaga and getting the Dimensional Slash. AKA Sukuna was toying with Gojo, he could have beaten him way sooner, but he didn't because he was waiting for that adaptation. I vehemently disagree with this. You're trying to tell me that Sukuna wasn't going for the kill shot here or here or here, or most obviously here, in my opinion, where Sukuna is laughing at Gojo after the brain damage, talking all the smack and saying he's about to open the domain and finish this. Now, before anybody says anything, Sukuna does also say, like, while my domain is finishing you, I will also be adapting to your infinity. But it's irrelevant at that point, right? Because he wouldn't know the dimensional slash because Maharaga would never get the chance to use the dimensional slash for him to copy. So yes, technically Maharaga would be adapted to infinity, but who cares at that point? Gojo's already gone thanks to the normal domain expansion. So not only was Sukuna going for kill shots before the adaptation, but there's also no way that Sukuna planned to get his chest caved in or take an unlimited void, which would subsequently lead to severe brain damage that prevented him from opening domains. And then of course, there's no way you can tell me he planned on literally getting knocked unconscious by Gojo. So all this goes to show me is that Sukuna was trying the entire fight and it wasn't until the culmination of the battle that he had the ability to learn the dimensional slash that he did. Now, obviously that was his goal, like he wanted to upgrade his arsenal, but he was still trying to win the fight before that. So now with all that groundwork out of the way, let's talk about this fight. I think two things are clear from the original fight. One is that Sukuna has the edge in the domain battle, but two, Gojo had the edge in the hand-to-hand -hand battle, like pretty obviously. Now, this is why this is impossible to know, because the details and the nuance from this point out could go any way, any way that the story needed them to, right? So first of all, we don't know if the four-armed Sukuna form would now give him the edge in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It might, but I don't think it definitely does, because he doesn't necessarily get an attack power boost or a speed boost from this form. The benefits of this form are more about being able to chant and do the hand signs freely, which aren't really going to make that much of a difference within a domain expansion, in my opinion. Now, you might say, oh, it definitely will. He trumps Gojo now, but we're never going to know, right? So that's one side of things. Now, the domain expansion benefit, we also have a huge question mark now because the first domain will play out exactly the same. Gojo's will get destroyed due to the barrierless one being bigger. But after that, we don't know how the binding vows, we don't know how they're going to navigate that to try to one-up one another. If Gojo does the exact same stuff and Sukuna does the exact same stuff, Sukuna loses because, again, he doesn't know Unlimited Void going into this fight. So when Gojo sacrifices and, and inverses his domain and Sukuna's response to that was to get rid of his sure hit in order to make the attacks outside stronger, boom, he's been hit by Unlimited Void because he doesn't know he needs to be touching Gojo to prevent it. And not even knowing what the technique is, Sukuna's arrogance might be like, I can withstand whatever this guy's domain does to me for one second. But if that ever happens, he's done because Gojo goes in and this time there's no Maharaga to get in the way and save him. This is also why the Prison Realm experience from Gojo doesn't matter because that whole element in the original fight was the response to Sukuna sacrificing the sure hit to make his outside attack stronger. So in this scenario, that never happens. So Gojo doesn't need to do that Prison Realm maneuver. So at the end of the day, all I'm saying is that this could go either way. There's just too many unknowns, but without the guaranteed win condition of Maharaga, Gojo has proven he can defend sufficiently against domain amplification and expansion long enough to potentially get his own win condition of unlimited void off. This is the only guaranteed slam.